Okay, time for this tug to meet its asteroid and do its thing. Its acceleration is pretty good, especially compared to the stuff we had to transfer over to Trez. In particular, the Trez Oasis, which was really painful in terms of acceleration. Okay, we're within 500 meters, it looks like. And we can kill velocity pretty efficiently. So let's time warp through most of these 40 minutes. Minute and 30 seconds. It has to be here somewhere. There it is. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, little asteroid. You are getting captured now. We could use RCS, but actually we don't have that much more propellant. Better to slow down with the main engine if possible. We will be reusing this space tug later on after all. These tugs could just uh, grapple onto a fuel tank and suck the fuel in, so we could just toss up a fuel tank whenever we need to refuel them. Okay, and that's how we rendezvous with an asteroid. Well, a tiny little Class A asteroid. I wouldn't have pulled that maneuver off with a big one. Okay, so let's target center mass. Very important. Doesn't seem like it's a solid surface. I mean, it's not a flat surface that we're pointing at. Here we go. Come on. Okay, we got it. Alright, this asteroid is not the size that Integral whatever requested, but it is the size for Zaltronic. Yeah, see, uh, Class A. Uh, the one that didn't satisfy was the Class D one. Okay, put the vessel into orbit of Kerbin. That's simple enough. Orbit. Let's have Smart ASS turn us retrograde. Because we've got a older probe core on here. Okay. So let's go. No no reason to wait. We're pretty much at the uh, thing's periapsis anyway. Total mass is 21 tons right now. These Class A's are tiny. I'm not going to bother with uh, subtle adjustments to it right now. We'll just get it into orbit and we'll deal with it later. We'll keep the tug stuck on it. Should Mimus get two moons? Should the moon get a moon? I don't know. Oh, we're actually pretty far off from the periapsis. Six hours. So, well, that's changing. Okay, we're in orbit according to Mechjeb, but uh, we have to be in orbit according to Kerbal and then maintain stability. Let's get into a roughly circular sort of thing. Maybe we'll just give uh, Kerbin a third moon. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's jittering a little bit. Okay. Alright, so we satisfy that contract. Uh, we'll decide what to do with this little asteroid later. It is in orbit. Yep, within the orbit of Minmus, beyond the orbit of the moon. Shouldn't interfere with either of those bodies. It's in a highly inclined orbit, as you can see. Okay, now we need to deal with the return stage. I mean, not the return stage, the stage that is returning. Okay, we are currently approaching the planned node for this stage. It's got plenty of fuel to execute this, and it's probably better that we dump this fuel now rather than carry it back down to the surface. Again, just for mass reasons and safe touchdown reasons. It's probably got to take at least a minute to do this. We're running out of time, though. We're going to be hitting the atmosphere soon. Let me take in the solar panels while I can. 
And here we go. Oh, only 30 seconds, huh? Want to restrain that periapsis, so I do want to make sure that we eventually do go down. That should be, well, it should be safer. It should be reasonably safe. With this inclination, I'm not trying to hit the KSC or anything, and we'll probably end up on the opposite side. Might hit some mountains. We've got some some thrust to work with to avoid that sort of thing. All right, let's see how it does. It's a smart ASS hold retrograde for us. Hope there's nothing I'm forgetting about how quirky this might be. After all, it was frustrations with this stage and the Maximus first stage that led me to eventually uh, try stage recovery as an alternate means of returning stuff and recovering funds. So, it doesn't bode well for how well I can do this, but we'll see. So after this, we'll uh, take care of the mid-course plane changes, and then I have to send over an EVE probe. I think the EVE probe is, uh, and it's an EVE lander, is already orbiting Kerbin. So I don't have to build that, and that'll be good for the flow of things. Now for the jewel stuff, I will have to build that stuff, and probably we want to send quite a lot of things. And maybe I will have to wait until uh, next session, next recording session. I don't know how many episodes this is going to be chopped up into, but I might have to wait until a next recording session to actually launch the Jewel stuff. We'll see. Depends how long it takes me to build them. Okay, we've got some flames. Alright, things are looking okay so far at 35 kilometers. Uh, temperature on the aerospike is now over 800 Celsius though, and that's probably a bad thing. Ah uh, yeah, they are overheating. I am going to use, well, I don't know, uh, using uh, engine power to slow down uh, did not work so well last time, I believe, because it brought us in steeper, and that's obviously not good. And also, they they also overheat when running, so that's a bad idea as well. So let me avoid all that and just uh, just let them explode on their own if they're going to decide to do that. 1100 degrees Celsius. Part of the problem is probably the Quinta adapter that they're sitting on. No, actually it's cooler, so I guess it's not the problem. But it might conduct, conduct heat somehow. Temperature's still going up. But uh, not quickly. It might survive. It's going down now. Temperature is going down. Perhaps this thing will survive. Seem to be mostly flat land up front here. Maybe some water. Water is not a problem. We need bigger uh, controllers. That'll be a lot easier once we unlock some larger controllers, and I haven't done that. I have to upgrade the VAB before I can unlock that stuff. We need the uh, research limit to be lifted. Interesting, I, I don't think I've been around here before when coming down back down the curb and all these snow-capped mountains, a lake there, snow-capped mountains over here that we have to try and avoid. Yeah, it's sort of a nice place. I'm not too sure what's below the clouds. I see uh, ridges and stuff around here. But where we're headed, I don't know what kind of terrain we're aimed for. Okay, parachutes. Landing gear. This is a nice place, I think. Very scenic. Okay, parachutes are out, but we're descending too fast. Anyway, very scenic. Almost Skyrim kind of thing. Peaks and all. Okay, plop, and all settled. Alright, let's recover this and see what we got. So the game crashed.
and that is one other time that the game does crash and that's when I'm trying to recover a vessel so put that on the list uh, VAB uh, the launch pad and recovering vessels anyway let's see what happened to that stage that we were trying to recover okay it's right here it says uh, landed at Kerbin that's definitely the stage we're looking for so let's recover that yep Okie dokie, and it was all the way on the other side of Kerbin, so... Wow, that's not much at all. No, there's something wrong here. We didn't get the... Where where did the... Where did the arrow spikes go? Hold on. Let me check my debris. Hmm. It's the move fuel depot. I have no idea where the arrow spikes went. Well, that's that. They cheated us. Oh, wait, hold on. Space tug. No, that's just another space tug. That's a different space tug. Yeah, we got cheated. That's no fair. Okay, well, anyway, we have to put up with it and continue on with our missions. So, Dres Oasis seems to be the first one, so let's head out to that and do its mid-course plane change. Okay, I'm just letting Curve Alarm Clock bring us to the right point, or approximately to the right point. Alright, let's light him. Okay, here we go for the last bit of this, about the last minute of the burn, looking at my closest approach distance using this, even though this is not necessarily accurate, at least relative inclination should be. Uh, Sherlock, Philly, Pat Free, and Roller seem to be all good. And I'll just uh, take it out of Smarty SS mode, turn on SES, and then cut it once the relative inclination is at a minimum. Okay. That's about it. Okay, so 27,000 kilometers it looks like. Uh, I can take it out of physical time warp as well. I was using that, obviously. Okay, so, well, it's not entirely sure about my encounter. That's fairly typical of it. And things are probably going to only get worse if I mess with it. Let's see if I focus view. Hmm... Actually, uh, no, let's just use R uh, can we use RCS? Is RCS plentiful? No, it's not. We don't have any mob propellant. Hmm. Well, with the thrust as it is, the any RCS ports would hardly move this at all, so that's probably not a big deal. Let's aim for that node, and I'll burn right now. I'm not going to wait the three days. That's just going to complicate our whole situation. Now we could convert the water to mod propellant should we need to, but let's not do that here just yet. I don't know what, uh, probably we're going to lighten up if we do that. In other words, we'll lose some mass, but I'm not sure. And we'll have all the missions come in this way so that they can rendezvous easily with this Dress Oasis. Should they need to grab some fuel from it after it converts to water. Let me just quickly check how much Delta V is going to take to... Come on, let me... Oh, come on, let me make a node. 1700, huh? Let's scooch that closer to the periapsis. And probably... Oh, not too much less than 1700. 1650. Well, we don't have that right now here. So, let's get rid of that. Okay, that's closer. Let's see how that works out for us. Well, uh, 1574. That's better. How about if we get even closer? Let me, while I'm making these adjustments, start the conversion process. Let's see, we've got guys in this lab right now. 
So let me say start LFO. Okay, 28.88% load. Efficiency is only 28.9%. So I guess we'll be losing some mass. Yeah, we're losing mass here as it converts. Uh, we're not, we're, we are gaining delta V, but not very quickly. We'll have to make sure not to convert all the water, though, because uh, we need some of that to supply the Kerbals with uh, life support. Okay, that's the wrong way around. Part of our delta V gain is actually by the decrease in mass. The other part is the increase in the liquid fuel and oxidizer. Well, we'll have to be careful with all the other missions. This is pretty tough. I didn't think it'd cost this much to get into orbit around Drez. Let's get to 50. Okay, let's see how much it'll cost now. Really close here. Okay, uh, 1487. As little as... 1465? 1460. Now we're getting to the point where it's probably borderline and the game might accidentally decide to fling us out into interplanetary space, so let's avoid that. 1460 is what we're aiming for here. Let's time warp a bit while this is converting so that we can get to that number at least. Okay. Well, certainly it would have been more efficient to just carry fuel instead of water. But, yeah. Uh, we'll have to get some better Kerbals in our fuel refinery, it looks like. We don't have the best store of... They need a lot more training, let's face it. Okay, so right now I think we have enough. And some extra. So let me just stop them from making it so that we don't lose the water. Okay. Alright, so now on to the Rocky 3 for its part of the journey. So as it turns out, the Rocky 3 will have to use some of the fuel from the lander portion in order to get into orbit. Uh, the only part that's really tight on fuel is the Dres CRT here. So that's going to be a problem. We'll see how that works out. Anyway, five hours here and then we will burn. All right, next stage. And you can see this has 1780 or so. And so after this is done, it'll have about 1100. And that's not enough to get into orbit around Drez. So we're going to have to use the stuff from the lander, which is significant. I mean, we have a lot in the lander. But what that means is we'll have to refuel the lander before sending it to the surface to drill for more water. OK, here we go again. Waiting for the minimum here, relative inclination, 0 0.1, 0 0.09, 0 0.08. Looking good. Okay, that's a minimum. Okay, well this is more maneuverable than the huge Drez Oasis, so we should be able to make the corrections a little bit easier. So let's focus view on Drez. Uh, I'm missing where... Come on, uh, 11,000 kilometers, we should be able to see it, right? Oh, it doesn't agree. Kerbal, why aren't you agreeing with it? Why can't you and MacJeb just get along? Okay, well, there's a Drez encounter of some kind. Ah, now now we have an agreement, because sometimes they get along, sometimes they don't. Okay, 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 okay. That, that's good enough. All right, uh, 50k or so, plus or minus like 100k. That's fine. All right. Good close encounter. Let me add the SOI change. I should have done that with the other vehicle as well. Okay, so Rocky 3 SOI change. I'll be after everything else, and that's expected. Let me hop on over to the Dres Oasis and get its SOI change in.
And while I'm doing this, let me double check that it's got my periapsis still good. Okay, that's good enough. Let's get that in and switch to the Dres Rover. Now I know mid-course plane changes aren't the most engaging thing ever, but they're so... They have such an impact on how the whole encounter goes that I can't really avoid it. Otherwise, it seems like I got there by shenanigans, so... We will detail them in in great detail to make sure everything is clear. Okay, this still has plenty to it, the rover, but uh, again, well, the Delta V situation is complicated with this one. This is going to be interesting to drive around on Drez, assuming it works at all. Alright, on the bright side, this has lots and lots of Delta V. I'm not worried about this one. It's the next one, the Drez CRT, that I'm more worried about. Yeah, I think I'll keep it there for now. Okay, now, having settled this one, let us add its SOI change and then move on to the Drez CRT. Now, you can immediately see that this one's got to be a little bit tight. After we take out the 777, we'll have 1,800 meters per second left. And judging from what the Drez uh, Oasis had, uh, we're talking about between, uh, let's estimate 15 to 1,700 meters per second required to get into orbit. It might be that because of this one's trajectory, it'll require more if it's going a little bit faster than the others or... Uh, you know, it seems to be coming in a little bit ahead, maybe. Don't know. So that's the issue. But it should be a pretty close trajectory. So we're estimating about 1,500 meters per second if we can get the orbit close to Drez. And so that is what I aim to do here. Okay, here we go. Let me delete that alarm. Things sell down and throttle. Okay, now with this, uh, I would say that this is the end of Phase 2, except I think uh, sending the probe to EVE will be the end of Phase 2 of this grand deployment, I suppose we'll call it. Uh, grand deployment, that's what we'll call it. So, Phase 1 was up to the capture of that asteroid. Phase 2 was all these plane changes and the uh, EVE mission, uh, sending that on its way. Phase 3 will be putting together the craft for Jewel and launching those. And there's probably many more phases. Uh, returning the returning the Explorer X from Eve to Kerbin, getting that on its way, probably phase four will be that'll be a key part of that. Phase four might include also but it won't include yeah, it'll probably include uh, something to do with dual transfers and such. Okay, last of mid-course plane changes for Drez. Let's take this carefully. Uh-oh, I lost my target. Very important. Oh, not even an encounter? Yeah. Messed up a bit on this one. Let's see, at least it's maneuverable. Very easy to turn it. Okay, that's a crash course. We don't really want to put our Kerbal on that. 1800 meters per second right there. Left over. Okay, well there's a periapsis of some kind. A little bit jittery. But alright, Genemini Kerman seems to be on his way and with 762 days worth of food he's probably enjoying himself at least chowing down okay okay well it seems like Kerbal alarm clock is having a little bit of trouble with this SOI change as you can see it's not quite decisive whether there is an SOI change okay managed to get it it is arriving earlier than the others so it will have a lot more, well, some more velocity to dump off in order to get into orbit. So we'll have to watch out for that. But anyway, it's there. We've got uh, some sort of periapsis, hopefully. And now let's turn to that EVE mission.
Okay, so here is our Eve Lander 2, and this was, of course, put together after our first attempt failed. Uh, we, we, I, I forget, I think it was deployed by the Explorer X, and we weren't really trying to land. We, Anyway, uh, I think we might have been trying to land, but anyway, something went wrong. I forget, it's been a long, long time. And you can tell it's been a long time because, A, this thing has been around for 124 days, um, B... Oh, it, that resized. When I when I came into this in the first place, this reaction wheel had expanded, uh, a la the glitch with uh, some of our other ones. But now it's resized back to normal. So I'm confused. I wonder how it did that. Anyway, uh, we've got a uh, Rockamax 487S down here. It is the transfer stage. This was launched by the Sparrow, which is our smallest launcher, and so that's pretty impressive that it was able to launch all this. And uh, we've got a pretty large heat shield here with a blade of shielding that's a little bit diminished. We've got solar panels arrayed like this so that when we retract these, uh, those will still provide us with power. Uh, Science Junior is the main thing, though we do have goo containers. We have these thrusters here just in case and for maneuvering inside the EVE system. And so they're angled so that they avoid the heat shield. And these are fuel tanks with a little bit of fuel, though most of the fuel is down here. And so, yep, a probe core here, reaction wheel, parachute, of course, because we're trying to land on EVE. So, yep, I think that's about all I have to say about it. We don't have, we do have a thermometer back here. Okay, and obviously some batteries. Okay, so I've got the plot done, and what I've realized is that this is an ideal time to transfer to EVE, because uh, we're going to be hitting it at the, at one of the nodes. So there is no mid-course plane change here, you'll notice, and we're hitting EVE right there. This leads me to want to launch more things to EVE. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll do this one first, but we don't have any contracts to do anything more with EVE. I don't uh, have any Gilly contract either, but maybe we'll check in the emission control after I do this burn to see if we can pick one up. Okay, let me see what the burn time is for this. 2 minutes and 21 seconds. Okay, we can time up a little bit further and then we'll start the burn. Okay, here we go. Let's make sure this turns out alright. It has to be pretty precise to get that periapsis. That took a little bit of fine tuning. Not too much else to do. I guess we'll have, we'll have to do some sort of correction in the middle. I don't want to be this far out from EVE. This stage still has fuel in. Okay. So let me plot some sort of mid-course plane change after all. Still not a bad situation. Oh, I see the problem. We are once again meeting the moon on the way out. I wonder if things are going awry. Okay, well, let's say I add a maneuver right after the moon encounter. Maybe that'll be better off. Okay, that's more like what I want. It's not quite what I want. Yeah, like that. Could get a little bit closer, probably. Too close. All right, that'll do. Um, let me add this alarm and let's check in Mission Control whether I need to send something else out on this transfer. Well, let's see. Plant a flag on Duna. Plant a flag on Ike. Bill, bring a newly discovered Class C asteroid into an orbit around Gilly. That Gilly was an asteroid. Uh, hmm. That would be complicated. Worthwhile, obviously. Advanced completion, very nice. Huh. Would be tough, though. Okay, let me ponder this. Let me ponder this for a bit. 
and then I'll say, okay, th I don't know how, how many episodes this turned out, but let me ponder what I'm going to do with Eve and Jewel and build stuff for them. And then in the next episode, I'll come back with what I've got there. So this is probably part one or part two of this huge uh, great deployment. And we'll have a lot more going on pretty soon with all of the planets involved, except for Elu and, you know, Moho and... I think that'll be it. Uh, actually, Ilu and Moho we're leaving out here, but everything else we're probably going to be doing stuff with. Alright, so uh, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.